I don't think you all understand who I am. Her nickname is Drunk of the Bear. We know they drank from sunup to sundown. I mean, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. It's her day to pick up the kid, but okay. it doesn't always happen. It's one or two days a week, maybe she gets him. I excel at everything. She hasn't worked for over two years. I mean, she, she was always calling to borrow money. and uh, But, it, yeah, it's been like two years since she got a job. She keeps on telling me she's looking. She's always finding the good opportunities and everything, but... Welcome back in, everyone. Today, we're going to listen to the interview with the manager of the apartment complex in which Sarah and George lived in since 2019. So for many years, they were there. They actually managed to create themselves quite a reputation there at the Tillwood Park Apartments. Now, at the time that they were living there, it was called Tillwood Park Apartments. Since then, the apartment complex has new owners. So you may see some photos that I put up that say the Vista at Winter Park. It's the same property. Just wanted to get that out of the way in the up front. This is a really insightful interview. And I think if Sarah has just one person that she could call as a good witness for her, it is going to be this person. That doesn't mean <laughs> that doesn't mean that the prosecution can't get a hold of her and twist some things around or, you know, whatever they need to do. But I probably see if Sarah continues on with this. It's I could see this lady being called by the defense. It doesn't give her name. I'm not going to get into all of that. It does seem like she became friends with Sarah. And at, when I first saw this, I was like, you know, Sarah always talked about her apartment manager. She talked about her in the interview in, that she had at the police station. And I thought, and I even said on video at one point, yeah, she's nice to you because she has to be nice to you. You know, that's kind of her job. But it does sound like this woman felt sorry for Sarah at first. And because she had had some experience with DV in the past, she tried to help Sarah for a little bit. She even went and spoke to George on Sarah's behalf at one point. But finally, she gave up on Sarah because she says that the same thing that Brian said was that even though Sarah claimed that she wanted to get away from George, she kept going back to him or she kept bailing him out of jail. And honestly, that is not anything that they can really use Sarah in court. It's just me making a point that it does have a lot of the characteristics of a DV situation. But the problem is, is that we can't hear George's side of everything. And I will say that there are plenty of pieces put together here that are going to paint a bad enough picture of Sarah from what other people have said that kind of can hopefully speak for George in the trial. All right. We're talking about what this, what this apartment manager brings up. You guys, they're talking about them out in, around the apartment complex and all the things that they're doing. Uh, she's talking about previous injuries she saw on Sarah. They had, she said roughly, she goes, there's somewhere between 20 to 30 complaints against them. She one time, at one time she mentioned Sarah was outside and she said, I'll just put it this way. She wasn't properly dressed. She didn't say naked. So I'm thinking what she meant is she was outside in her underwear. I, I don't know. Also, George walking into someone's apartment, stone drunk one night, not realizing he was in the wrong apartment. Anyway, it's some good stuff. So, let's get to it. Today's date is February 26, 2020. The time now is approximately 12.05 hours. This is in reference to Orange County case number 20-017904. I'm currently located at Tealwood Park Apartments, 4704 Lucier. Lucier, yes. For Winter Park, Florida, 32792. I am here with my partner, Detective Scott Long, with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And can you state your name? Melissa May Sexton. You are the property manager of this complex, correct? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> um, we had come in here asking about the tenants, um, Sarah Boone and George Torres. Mm -hmm. And they have lived here um, 
you gave us a date of February 9th, 2018? Correct. Okay. Um, you had told us that <clears throat> Sarah would confide in you about her and George's relationship. Can you tell us further what she would tell you? Yes. Um, Sarah, when, shortly after she moved in um, with George, she came to the office um, to talk to me. We noticed bruises and stuff on her. And um, she asked me if she could talk to me privately and asked how I could, how she would be able to get George off of the lease. Is there any way to do that? Uh, which prompted, you know, deeper conversation. Uh, she proceeded to let me know and she was showing me a lot of bruises and marks. Uh, there were handprints, scratches. She even at one point had to go to the hospital through multiple conversations that we had had. It steadily progressed, you know. Um, she had a very large gash at one point in her shin. She had to go to the hospital and get that taken care of. I'm not exactly sure what it was from, um, but I think it had to do when they got into a fight outside <laughs> and something got broke. I think it was one of their wine glasses or something. But, um, you know, she came to me at one point asking, you know, what do I do? Like, how can I get rid of him? You know, I don't, I've never dealt with this type of situation. Um, I just counsel her as she continued to come to me and explain to her that, you know, she had to make a decision if she was going to stay with him or not be with him. If she, you know, was going to try to work things out, they needed to seek out therapy, help, something. <laughs> um, it wasn't too long after that last conversation that I found out the police had came and George was arrested. Uh, I don't remember about how long it was in between time, but there was another incident after that where they both got arrested, all for domestic. Um, the complaints uh, throughout their whole term, roughly about 20 to 30 noise complaints, fighting, arguing, uh, banging on doors, uh, loud music. It was just always something pertaining to their lifestyle. I do know that I have seen both of them intoxicated as early as 9 o'clock in the morning, and I mean staggering, falling down, intoxicated, <laughs> both of them. Um, and there was a noise complaint that I had received about some fighting one day that was going on and Sarah was actually wandering around the property very drunk, um, barefoot, not properly dressed, <laughs> I'll say it like that, um, uh, sitting on the side of her building over by the retention pond. Um, when I was told about that is when I approached Sarah, sat down, talked to her. I even had also separately went and talked to George and told them that once they had sobered up, I needed to have a meeting with them. Um, the following business day, because this was a Friday, I do remember that, um, I went to see them Monday, roughly about 12 o'clock. They were sober. <laughs> they apparently had had some epiphany, you know, that they were going to straighten themselves up and start acting right. And they did very good for, well, basically until now. I haven't gotten any complaints since May of the past year, mm -hmm. you know. But up until that point, the complaints were consistent, monthly, always. Um, did, would you ever speak with George by himself? Like, did he ever confide in you about their relationship? The one time um, where, I, like I was just saying, that um, when I talked to her, she wanted me, she asked me to go talk to him. Um, but she's like, please, but put the fear of God in him. Fear of God in him. <laughs> I'm a very stern property manager, you know, I don't tolerate a whole lot of... <laughs> right. And she knew that, and um, she seemed scared of him at the time. So I said, sure, no problem, just stay here. I uh, will go talk to him. I went over, sat down, talked to George. I talked to him for about 30 minutes all together. And, you know, George had explained to me that she was actually the aggressive one. And the reason she ended up with Marks is... Uh, in my, I'll say my perception of what he was trying to is it, explain is that she's very hands-on, in the face, you know, dramatized and, and talking and explaining or, or fussing or whatever they might have been doing. Right. And I, I believe that because Jean, my assistant, doesn't even like to deal with her, would avoid her like the plague <laughs> because she was always drunk and she's very hands-on. Uh, there was one day, as a matter of fact, it was that same day that I talked to George by himself. She kept grabbing me by the arms to the point that I told her, I said, touch me one more time, we're gonna have a problem. You know, I'm right. either gonna contact the police or whatever we need to do, but you can't keep grabbing on me. I had asked her several times to quit touching me. <laughs> and because of that, she would do the same thing to Jean, and Jean didn't like it. Right. So, um, 
you know, he, that's what he was explaining to me, is she was always the touchy one, the aggressive one, you know, not that she was hitting him, but she would be like in his face, or she might, you know, push him, or, you know, little things like that. And she would block him from coming out of the room, or whatnot, and he would take her and move her. You right. know what I mean? And just, that's the way he had explained it to me. Right. She has told me, even literally to Monday, I have been told by her several occasions that he has drug her around by the hair of her head. Um, I've been, you know, told about by neighbors. Um, I'm sorry I don't have it anymore, but at one point a tenant actually sent us a video clip via text of them two fighting and beating on each other out in the backyard. Um, there was another complaint incident about a ladder being propped up to the wall that George was using to climb over the wall <laughs> to try to get back into his apartment so he get in and out. There was another night, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this too. Uh, I got a call for one of my vacants in building 24, uh, 4724, which is not their building. <laughs> there was a tent set up on my vacant back porch. <laughs> and it's apparently where George was sleeping for a couple of nights because she had him out of the house. I have another tenant here who may or may not speak to you, I'm not sure. Um, for that reason, I don't want to give you her name just yet without sure. talking to her. but. Yeah. George and her fighting that the, a different evening had actually wandered into her home. He was so drunk and had no idea where he was. And when she came home, luckily her kids were not there because she's a single mother with three kids. George was actually upstairs in her house hollering, looking for Sarah, thinking he was in his apartment. <laughs> so we've had some incidences with them in that aspect, but nothing has ever been... Um, so bad that, you know, I didn't feel that we could resolve the problem. And like I said, we haven't had any issues since May of last year. No complaints, no nothing until this. So we thought, hey, they're doing great. You know, maybe they fixed the problems. <laughs> I mean... Has she come to you since May of any, of any issues? No, okay. not one time. But then, again, you did... It basically, they were told you're going to be evicted if there are. Yes. So it was kind of like tighten at, up or get out. Yeah. It was okay. put up or shut up. I was over it. Yeah. If it continued, I was putting them out. Right. So. Did you ever see any marks on George? No. Not one. <laughs> not one. <laughs> well, George was a little bit darker skin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Would you see George as often as you saw Sarah? It sounds no. like Sarah came to you a lot more yes. than you. Yes. Yeah. We would always see Sarah as far as the only time I ever really saw George is the time when we actually got George to sign off the lease. Right. Um, and he came to me and said, you know, I can't get back in the house. <laughs> She's got all my personal paperwork because would you please have a conversation with her so that I can get my personal paperwork back from her? He goes, do you have a bolt cutter, a set of bolt cutters for my bicycle that's out back? And I said, what's it chained to, you know? And he said, it's actually chained to your AC unit. I said, yeah, no problem. I'll cut the lock. I'll cut the lock for anything attached to my AC unit. It's not supposed to be attached to that. Right. So I went out back and actually cut the lock on both of the bike locks because Sarah would not answer the door for me because she knew George was there. Okay. Um, once George was gone, she had actually, because Sarah had my cell phone number, um, being that I had already went through and just got out of a very abusive relationship, Sarah knew that because, you know, I confided in her and explained that um, she did feel a lot more comfortable in coming to me. So she, I told her if she ever needed someone, you know, or it was an emergency, she could reach out to me and I would do my what I could to help her. You know, I felt bad for her. But after a while, when she just kept taking him back and taking him back, I just told her, I said, you know, you're just going to have to call the authorities. You're on your own. <laughs> it's obvious you don't want it to stop, you know. She's not doing anything to get help, according to you, and you just keep dealing with it, I mean, you know, there comes a point where it's just stupidity, you know, but that's the run-ins and instances that I've had with him. I've never seen a mark on George, and he's never told me that she's hit her at all, okay. but she has told me in front of him that he has hit her and things that he's done, and he was not denying it. He never denied it. <laughs> so... George and her both expressed to me on many occasions that they knew they needed help. You know, but I'm guessing due to their financial situation, not having any work, probably why they didn't do much. Right. Yeah. When you saw them together, who looked to be like a more dominant? I mean, did one seem to be more dominant over the other? George. 
George was very confident. Um, you know, he wasn't arrogant or anything. He, he, for the most part, stayed to himself. Like I said, there are a couple people here that he knew, <laughs> you know, from, I will say, another life <laughs> from Philadelphia. And, um, you know, George was the one I always seen driving the vehicle. George is the one I always seen playing with the child. Um, you know, never saw Sarah outside playing with her kid, ever. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the time, Lucas, you would find him riding around the property on his bike unattended. No parents outside, no nothing. Um, because I had actually had a conversation with Sarah about that. <laughs> and I said, you know, the, the kid was a great kid, don't get me wrong, he never did anything to get in any trouble, but it was more my concern for his well-being. You know, when he's all the way riding over here and around some of these corners with the dumpsters, these people don't see nobody, and they sure ain't going to see no kid on the bike. So I had a conversation with her about that, and... We haven't had any really problems. I thought I can say I've only seen Lucas on his bike away from her like that twice. She actually had secluded him to stay in front of the building, you know, which was fine. I just didn't want him on the way to get <laughs> But yeah, you didn't see Sarah out at all. The only time I ever saw her, especially after the incident that took place with Emmett and his ex-girlfriend. Um, it was more like a confrontation that took place in the office. She made an accusation on Emmett saying that he was trying to forcefully, like, I don't want to say rape, but he was trying to push himself on her. On Sarah? Um, on Sarah. Some, so a, she made that claim. Some tenant? A different yeah, tenant. another tenant that knew George from Philly. Um, and they confronted the two of them. Um, you know, I will say Sarah hold her gro hold, held her ground when the girl confronted her and asked her and said, you know, don't lie to my face. And Sarah said, yeah, he did, you know. So I was surprised because she knew that girl was <laughs> but <laughs> and she's larger than me. So, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, maybe there's some truth to that. But it ended up, you know, just fizzling out. It was no big deal. After that situation took place, you really didn't see Sarah too much. She was pretty intimidated. Um, those two folks are actually a pretty large family that I have living here on site that actually took up four units at that time. So the whole fam family lived here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> so after that, we really didn't see a whole lot of her. But before that, they would hang out periodically. Said, the other two families? No. They just knew each other from the back couple. in the day. Oh, no, the couple the, that, uh, the kids did. Kids yes, that. that's what initially prompted it, and then that accusation was made yeah. during that same time. Okay. So, and when it comes to the kids on my property, I stay very involved with them. Yeah. We have some issues with our bus routes and all kinds of stuff, and uh, we had some kid vandalism being done, broken glass bottles. They were pulling glass bottles out of the trash, breaking them, thought it was fun. Um, and one kid told on another, and the parents got involved. It became a little bit of an issue, so I had to get in the middle to squash it, you know. I didn't want anybody fighting on the property or kids getting hurt for that matter. But that's it. Is there anything else that you think is important for us to know about Sarah or George that we haven't discussed? Uh, <coughs> I mean, no, I don't, nothing really, they heard nicknames, Drunk of the Bear. I mean, you know, literally. <laughs> we know they drank from sunup to sundown. Would she ever, I know she confined in you a lot, would she ever admit that she was an alcoholic to you? Yeah. She would? Yes. Okay. I wish I still had my text messages. I <laughs> sent it to me on text many occasions. I know we drink too much, and blah, blah, blah. You know, she told me that George one time had it enrolled in AA and was getting help. Now, brother, that was any truth. I have no idea. Um, a lot of stuff like that I just take with a grain of salt. Right. <laughs> you know, I think she was more concerned about the image that was being put in my head for them, and I think she was just trying right, to paint a prettier to. picture. Right. Because I will say, <laughs> it was like a week later, she was. <laughs> and when we go, you know, inspecting the property and walking around different projects, we do a lot of uh, pressure washing throughout the year. We do that a couple of times. You know, I ride around the back sides of the buildings, checking everything out. We've got a property drainage system back there. You always knew because you'd ride back there and you'd hear, ah, 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 nine, ten o'clock in the morning, they're drunk, falling down, cutting up. <laughs> My God, I can't imagine being drunk like that all the time. Jeez. Okay. Thank you.
measuring him for me? Yes. Thomas, yes. I swear everything we've talked about has been true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Since our recording, 12 to 20 hours. Well, my goodness, how did these people not get evicted from all of their shenanigans around this community? It's, it <laughs> blows my mind. Woo! It surprises me the patience that this woman had with Sarah. But again, I think that's part of her job is to have that kind of patience. But after listening to it, do you guys agree with me? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Do you think that she would be a good witness for Sarah? You know, touching on some of the things that she said, they haven't had any issues with them since May of last year, which you do the math on that. That's about nine months before George's death. And but she also said it was because they had been warned one more and you're out. You're going to get evicted. She said she never saw marks on George. And when Sarah had said something about him hitting her in front of her, she never or George never denied it. And she also said that Sarah admitted to her about having a drinking problem, which was a big deal, I believe, because it seemed like in her interview, she definitely did not even want to go there. I found it interesting that her perception was that George was the dominant one in the relationship. And I find it interesting because just from everything I've seen on the case, watching Sarah, reading her freaking letters and how she acts in court and everything else, I just... I always, and listening to Brian too, Brian's interview too was very telling. Just seems like Sarah was the dominant one. But again, you know, if you're the prosecution and you want to break that down, if she does give like a good defense witness testimony for Sarah, the prosecution can come back in and turn it around and say, well, you said that you thought that she was the dominant one in the relationship. Were you aware of this, 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 and this? about them or that occurred with them and you know it could just throw her testimony up against the wall i also am confused i don't know if i'm confused or okay one last thing that interview that we had previously listened to was from a friend of georgia's and it was a dude from philly and in her testimony here she said that sarah made accusations against another tenant that was one of george's old friends from philadelphia is that the same guy i wonder sarah claims he tried to make uh well, i guess he tried to hit on her or something or make a physical pass at her i don't know that so that that right there if that did occur there's a point for sarah to come back and argue you know if he does give a good witness testimony for the prosecution, Sarah could come back and argue that, that they had a situation. So, yeah, a little piece by piece. I'm, I'm putting this puzzle together on my own and I guess putting it out there to you guys to help you kind of piece it together on your side. And I want us to be 100% prepared by the time she gets into court and us to know these little these little points little points that you know maybe it's been a while since we watched it i mean it has been four years since it all started or maybe we just didn't pay attention to certain parts of this case now we got to start paying attention because we're getting down to the wire thank you for watching everyone and listen if you were enjoying those weekly crime news reports that i was doing where we hopped around from topic to topic and gave about two to three minutes on each I have started a sub channel dedicated to crime news only. So please check out the link to that channel down in the description box below. And if you don't mind, subscribe so you can be notified next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe on your way out and feel free to leave a comment. Have a blessed day.